really really wonderful uh, dani may god bless you and uh, uh, some 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 other people will be uh, i mean summarizing maybe if possible in the in the in the next classes okay so i think uh, some of you are getting ready for that anyway uh, god bless you and uh, uh, so previous class we discussed many things about uh, uh, maybe from chapter 5 uh, chapter 5 about the scroll uh, with the seven seals and uh, what are the specialities of the lamb of god jesus christ and uh, what are the uh, three types of songs that uh, john was listening from heaven uh, so those were the main and important uh, portions that we covered uh, in the previous class so today uh we will be studying from chapter 6 we'll be studying from chapter 6 and uh, uh we know that uh, in chapter 4 and 5 we saw that john is getting the visions about what happens in the heaven uh that was the main points that we were discussing from the chapter 4 and 5 so john was receiving a vision about what happens in heaven but especially from chapter 6 to 19 chapter 6 to 19 we see that john is watching the vision about how god is going to judge and punish the world okay so this is very important to understand john is watching a vision about how god is going to judge and punish the world because the the world the worldly people the unbelievers uh, the unsaved people are very wicked and they are they are not uh, able to obey the word of god so that's the reason uh, so john is uh, getting a vision about what god is going to do uh, with uh, with the with the world and uh, uh, how god is going to judge and punish uh, the worldly people and especially from chapter 6 to 21 chapter 6 to 21 uh, we read about seven seals are there seven seals and seven trumpets are there and seven bowls are there look into look into your uh, uh, bible and you can see there from chapter 6 open your bibles please open your bibles everybody look into that points you know uh, chapter 6 you can see the heading that the seals okay so from chapter 6 to 21 chapter 6 to 21 you can see that there are uh, uh, three 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 main important things are there the first one is seven seals okay and uh, the next one is the seven trumpets <clears throat> and the third one is the seven bowls up to the chapter 21 so uh, we have already studied in chapter 5 about jesus is the lamb of god and he is alone worthy to take the scroll and break the seals okay so uh, the the scroll has seven seals but jesus christ only was worthy to take the scroll and also to break the seal the seven seals of the scroll so now uh, let us study about what will happen when jesus break the scroll which is sealed with the seven seals okay so th- something is going to happen when jesus is opening or when jesus is opening the scroll or when jesus is breaking the scroll or the, the sealed uh, scroll then something is going to happen so now we are going to study about what will happen uh, during the time of opening or breaking the seven seals so let me give you an outline about the seven seals and the important figures included in in each seals okay so i'll try to give you some of the outlines about the seven seals and the <coughs> important figures included in each seals okay so that is the heading you you will get it now yeah you are getting it now so seven seals and figures seven seals and figures from revelation chapter 6 verses 1 to 17 and also chapter 8 verses 1 to 5 revelation chapter 6 verses 1 to 17 and again revelation chapter 8 verses 1 to 5 uh by the way i'm not going to explain these seven seals and the figures now we'll be doing later but you can just take it down these points 
only the, the, the points like the seven seal and what are the figures which, which we can see in that uh, particular uh, seal when uh, that seal is opened or broken, then something is going to happen there. So you can take it down. The first seal is white horse and uh, the uh, the and you can see the white horse there and the cold war is there that is from chapter 6 verses 1 and 2 and the second seal you can see the red horse and also the hot war then the third seal is you can see the black horse and the famine will be there and the fourth seal pale horse death and that will happen. Death will happen by war, starvation, and wild beast. And the fifth seal is there. You can see the cry of martyred of martyred that is from chapter 6 verses 9 to 11 and the sixth seal is yetkuk yetkuk cosmic changes cry and prayer of earth dwellers yetkuk cosmic changes cry and prayer of earth dwellers that is from chapter 6 verses 12 to 17. <clears throat> and the final seal is the seventh seal. When the seventh seal is opened or when Jesus was breaking the seal, the seventh seal, you can see there a silence in heaven for about half an hour. The silence in heaven for about half an hour. That is from chapter 8, verses 1 to 5. <clears throat> so listen, there are, uh, there are mainly seven seals you can see from chapter 6 to 8. Um, at the same time, uh, we will be discussing about all those things in detail, uh, maybe in the next class, if God allows. At the same time, we are going to the uh, we are not going to the detail of those things, but uh, uh, we will just keep there now. You can take it down all those points. <clears throat> we'll be discussing about that <clears throat> later. So, uh, so these are the things that uh, which is going to happen when Jesus is going to open or <clears throat> break the scroll, scroll or the seven seals. Okay. So this whole portion uh, speaks about the great tribulation on the unbelievers. Okay, the great tribulation period for the unbelievers and the Jewish people. Okay, the same time, there are some great events to happen in future that we know that. Okay, so what is going to happen afterwards? That means after the rapture or after the second coming. So the second coming of Jesus Christ will be there and the rapture of the church will be there. Great tribulation will happen. Millennial kingdom will come. Last judgment and eternity will be there. So these are the things that which is going to happen in the future. So we, we already studied in detail about uh, the second coming of Jesus Christ and uh, the rapture of the church, right? We already covered those points. But now let us study about the great tribulation. What is the great tribulation? Okay, so mainly uh, there, are, uh, there are three Christian views about uh, the, about uh, the tribulation among the uh, Bible scholars uh, based on many of the Bible references. You know, in Bible, there are many references recorded regarding uh, uh, the tribulation, the great tribulation, okay? So, you know, at present, we can see that there is a tribulation, there is a tribulation, there is a persecution in different places, in, in different, different areas, okay, different countries there are persecution but this tribulation is called the great tribulation that will not be just like as we have today but that will be entirely different and that is going to be a horrible thing 
for the for the people those who are living in this earth after the second coming of jesus christ okay but let me tell you one thing that there are mainly three christian views on great tribulation okay so this is a vast subject this is a vast topic to study but we are trying to uh, make it clear within few minutes okay so there are three christian views on great tribulation the first one is the pre tribulation the pre tribulation means uh, the people uh, are some people are believing that the rapture of the church will happen before the great tribulation okay the rapture of the church will happen before the great tribulation that is called the pre tribulation pre tribulation okay and the second group of people <clears throat> the second group of bible scholars they believe that there is a mid tribulation mid tribulation means <clears throat> the rapture of the church will happen in the middle of the great tribulation the rapture of the church will happen in the middle of the great tribulation at the same time the third group is there third group of bible scholars and the believers they believe that the post tribulation period the post tribulation period what do you mean by the post tribulation they believe that the rapture of the church will happen after the great tribulation the rapture of the church will happen after the great tribulation that is called the post tribulation period okay whatever it may be these different views of scholars about the great tribulation uh, will not affect badly on our salvation or, or our faith in jesus christ okay so let the pre tribulation people believe the rapture of the church will happen before the great tribulation and uh, let the mid tribulation people believe the rapture of the church will happen in the middle of the great tribulation and the post tribulation people believe that rapture of the church will happen after the great tribulation because of many reason we can assume one thing that during the time of great tribulation the universal church of god or the redeemed people by the blood of jesus christ will not be here on the earth for sure we will be with jesus christ and that is what we already discussed from chapter 4 and 5 so this is very important to understand that there are some people believing in pre tribulation some people believe in mid tribulation and some people believe in post tribulation whatever it may be that is not a matter at all because let anything happen any time let the second coming of jesus christ happen any time let the rapture of the church happen any time okay let everything happen any time that will not affect a true believer because if that person is believing in jesus christ very clearly let me tell you one thing that i mean those things will not affect you because you know the people are making these theologies and the people are making uh this understanding and this teachings about something just like uh, the great tribulation uh, according to their own intellectual capacity and, and according to their own understanding from the bible because there are many references to support each of them at the same time uh we have to we have to make a conclusion and we have to assume something that what is going to happen from the bible what we understand what we understand through our studies okay how it is going to happen and what is going to happen in that in that time in the future so we are trying to understand the things according or or based on the bible based on the bible and the plain meaning of the bible so it is assumed that right after the rapture of the church there will be an entry of antichrist okay so uh, right after the rapture of the church that means when the second coming of jesus christ is happening the same time the rapture of the church also will be happening then after that right after that there will be an entry of antichrist with the permission of god with the permission of god 
and that will be for seven years. And also, that is going to be the time of pouring out of God's wrath on the wicked and unrepented people on the earth. So listen very carefully. You know, there will be some people, those who are unrepented and the wicked people, you know, even though the preachers and the pastors and the believers are sharing the gospel to the people, you know, there are many people still, they don't believe in Jesus and they don't want to uh, uh, know about these things and they don't want to understand, they don't want to believe that there is a God and uh, uh, Jesus is coming soon and uh, the church will be taken up from this earth. They don't believe in that, even though we are, uh, we, we are sharing about the gospel and Jesus to those people, they don't believe in that. So because of that reason, you know, Jesus Christ is going to, going to pour out his wrath God is going to pour out his wrath upon these wicked people and the unrepented people on this earth after the second coming of Jesus Christ, after the rapture of the church. At the same time, there will be three types of judgments in these seven years. Three types of judgments in these seven years, like the, the, the seal judgment will be there, the trumpet judgment will be there, the bow judgment will be there. Okay, there are mainly three uh, judgments which is going to happen during the time of seven-year great tribulation. Now, don't think that okay, uh, we are teaching about the tribulation, great tribulation, all those things, uh, you know, to you know, to make people fearful. No, it's not like that. You know, this is the reality that we have to study about all these things, okay? There is a judgment and there is a punishment and there is a great tribulation. So we have to understand this because we have to be, we have to be prepared enough for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And if we are taken from this, this earth, nothing to be worried about all those things, okay? So because that great tribulation is not for the believers, it's not, that is not for the true believers, okay? So we believe that there will be, in, in especially from Revelation chapter 6, verses 6 to 16, okay? Revelation chapter 6, verses 6 to 16, we understand uh, there will be three types of judgments, okay? During the time of the great, tri I mean, tribulation, what is that? The seal judgment, the trumpet judgment, and also the bowel judgment. Okay, so now uh, uh, that is in Malayalam, what is that? Uh, yeah, mudra, mudra, um, right? Mudra, eight mudra, then eight kakalangal, then eight kalashangal. Yeah, eight mudra, eight kakalangal, eight kalashangal. So these are the judgment, the, the types of the judgment which is, will be uh, poured out upon the, the, the wrath of God will be poured out upon the people of this earth after the second coming of Jesus Christ for seven years. Okay, so during that time, Satan, the Antichrist, will take the full charge of the world and he will be the ruler of the world. Okay, that's what uh, Jesus also said. Okay, the ruler of the world is coming. I have nothing to be with him because, I mean, that is the ruler of the world. Okay, so that will, that will be the time that uh, the Satan or Antichrist will take the full charge of the world and he will be the ruler of the world. He will be the ruler of the world. Amen. So uh, uh, do one thing, uh, Elsa, you can, you can read uh, maybe uh, chapter six verses one and two. Yeah. Chapter six verses one and two. Yeah. Now I watched when the lamb will open one of the seven seals and I heard one of the four living creatures say with a voice like thunder come. And I looked and behold a white horse and its rider had a, had a bow and a crown was given to him. And he came out conquering and to conquer. Verse three also. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say come. Okay. So uh, the, the, the first, yeah, yeah, first and second and all those things are there. Anyway, now we'll be uh, elaborately uh, studying later uh, about the three types of judgments in these seven years of tribulation period. Uh, but before that, we have to uh, have a clear understanding about the great tribulation and uh, uh, what, what is the Old Testament prophets 
they are already i mean prophesied about uh, this and when uh, this is going to happen and uh, uh, happen this event is going to happen and going to happen and who all will be going through the tribulation and uh, there are many more things okay so we have to study and we have to have a a, a small understanding about I mean, what is the tribulation and what will be there and uh, what is going to happen and also what are the Old Testament prophes uh, prophecies uh, from the Old Testament prophets uh, and uh, all those things. Okay, so the tribulation uh, is, a, is a future uh, seven-year period of time when God will finish his discipline of Israel and finalize his judgment of the unbelieving world. Okay, so that is called the tribulation, the great uh, tribulation. So the church will not be uh, will not be present uh, during this great tribulation time. So the church will be taken up hmm, from the earth in in an event. So that event is known as the rapture. That event is known as the rapture. So church will be taken up from the earth. Okay, and uh, you know that is which is very clearly mentioned in First uh, Thessalonians chapter four and First uh, Corinthians chapter fifteen. And all its portions. Okay, so that, that is very familiar, and we already discussed all those verses uh, in the previous class also. And we know that the church will not go through the wrath of God. Okay, for example, you just read uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. For, for God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so God is go not going to, I mean, uh, pour out his wrath upon the people of God because we are the people already saved. So we got salvation. The people, those who got salvation, they will not go through the tribulation. That's what we understand. Okay, at the same time, you know, after the rapture of the church, there will be a wrath of God. There will be a tribulation period. Through that, the church will not go through because, I mean, uh, we are the people, those who are saved, and we will be taken up into heaven uh, uh, during the time of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Okay, so in Bible, there are, there are some other names also given for this tribulation. Okay, there are some other names given for this tribulation. Okay, uh, we, will, we, will, we will see that. Okay, the first one is the day of the Lord. We will read some of the verses from, uh, 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 from, uh, from Old Testament uh, for, this, for this point. You know, there are some other names given for the tribulation. Okay, the first one is the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. Just read Joel, Joel chapter 3, verse 14. Joel chapter 3, verse 14. I see uh, there are many verses. But uh, we will read uh, Joel chapter 3, verse 14. Um, yeah. Verse 14. Yeah, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Okay, so the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord is the one of one of the name of the tribulation, great tribulation. And the second one is in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 30. Yes. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 30, the trouble or the tribulation. The trouble or the tribulation. Can you read? Deuteronomy 4.30. When you are in tribulation and all these things come upon you in later days, you will return to the Lord your God and obey his voice. Okay. And the next one, <laughs> next one is in Sephaniah. Sephaniah chapter 1 verse 15, Sephaniah chapter 1 verse 15, that is the time or great day of trouble, 
the time or great day of trouble. Great day of trouble. Sephaniah chapter 1, verse 15. A what? day of wrath is that day, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and de devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of cl clouds and thick darkness. Yeah. So there are, there are many names uh, uh, given in, in one uh, sentence, in one verse, but mainly we can say great day of trouble. It's a, it's a day of trouble. Okay. And the last one is in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Uh, that is the time of Jacob's trouble. Alas, that day is so great. There is none like it. It is a time of distress for Jacob, yet he shall be saved out of it. Okay. It's a time for Jacob. The time of distress for the Jacob. That means Jacob's trouble. So Jacob, uh, that means the people of Israel. Jacob is speaking about the people of Israel. Okay. So that will be a time of trouble for the people of Israel, but the people of Israel will be saved through that process of cleansing. Okay, so in order to understand the purpose and the time of the tribulation, we have to go to the go to some of the Old Testament prophetical books. Okay, and uh, let us see what uh, uh, what are the I mean uh, the Old Testament prophets prophesied about these things. Okay, what is the tribulation and what is going to happen? in those days there are many prophecies in the prophetical books of the old testament so let us go to uh, to daniel chapter 9 uh, and we will read uh, daniel chapter 9 verses 24 through 27 daniel chapter 9 verses 24 through 27 yeah 70 weeks are decreed about your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, to put an end to sin, and to atone your iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal both vision and profit, and to anoint a most holy place. Know, therefore, and understand that from, that from the going out of the word to restore and build Jerusalem, the coming of an anointed one, a prince, there shall be seven weeks. Then for 62 weeks, it shall be built again with, scares, with squares and moat, but in troubled time. And after 62 weeks, an anointed one shall be cut off and shall have nothing. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and sanctuary. It, it is, its end shall come with a flood, and to end there shall be war. Desolations are decreed. And he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week, and for half a of the week he shall put an end to sacrifice and offering and on the week of abominations shall come one who makes desolate until the decreed end is poured out on the desolator okay so i know that uh, you know even uh, the, the the previous class was very easy to understand but i know this this topic is little confused and complicated and it is little hard to understand uh, but I will try to, uh, to uh, make it simple and uh, I'll try to simply explain about this topic, uh, my level best, okay? So there is no problem. We'll go through that and we will study about those things. It is a little bit uh, confused, I mean, a topic and a complicated topic. We will we'll try to understand all those things, okay? So anyways, you know, uh, before we discuss the things from chapter nine, verses 24 through 27, we must know the background of those verses, okay? So when you read, all of a sudden, when you read uh, maybe chapter nine, verses 24 to 27, so why we are reading from the Old Testament? Because I already told you in the, in the, in the beginning class itself that you know, we have to refer with the, some of the Old Testament um, uh, prophetical books to understand what is the meaning of uh, which is written in the book of Revelation. So book of Revelation is a New Testament book. At the same time, in order to understand the prophetical book of book of Revelation, we have to go back to the Old Testament and we have to refer some of the, some of the prophetical books and what we want to know that, what the prophets are saying and prophesying about these things. Okay, so that's the reason. Now we are going back to the book of Daniel because book of Daniel is correlated with the book of Revelation. 
without going back to the book of Reve book of daniel we cannot understand what is the real meaning of the book of revelation because all the future events are written in the book of revelation so we are going to that portion this is the reason for that okay so uh, you know uh, so we have to know what is the what is the uh, background of those verses all of a sudden when you read uh, uh, daniel chapter 9 verses 24 to 27 nothing is known you know you will you will think okay what it is many things are written there what is the meaning of that it is very very difficult to understand the meaning but in order to understand the real meaning of that we have to go back to the background background means why it is written there that is from verses 1 to 23 same chapter chapter 9 verses 1 to 23 okay we don't have time to read all those verses to understand the background but we will try to read maybe uh, uh, i'll give you yeah I, i'm giving you some of the verses there and we'll be reading those verses only okay you know we understand from the, that portion uh, that there we read about Daniel observed a number of 70 years, okay, through the writings of prophet Jeremiah about the destruction of Jerusalem. Okay, you just read verse two. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, perceived in the books the numbers of years that, according to, to the word of the Lord to Jeremiah the prophet, must pass before the end of desolations of Jerusalem, namely 70 years. Okay, 70 years, you know, here, you know, when uh, Daniel was sitting in the presence of God, he just observed a number of 70 years, okay, through the writings of prophet Jeremiah. And that was about the destruction of Jerusalem, destruction of Jerusalem. Then what happened? Then Daniel began to pray and he began to fast in the presence of God for his people. When he was reading about the 70 years of uh, uh, the, the, the problem or the, the, the 70 years of the destruction of the Jerusalem and the captivity of uh, uh, the people of Jerusalem. And Daniel just, just sat down and he started to pray. He started to pray and he started to fast in the presence of God uh, for the people of Israel, for the people of Israel. And we read there, he confessed about his sins and also the sins of the people of God, okay? He confessed about his own sins and also he confessed about the sins of the people of Israel. And also we read there, he just remembered the promises of God. He just remembered the promises of God about the restoration of Israel, about the restoration of the Israel. So we already, I mean, we already, I already preached about May the captivity and the restoration uh, of the people of Israel, I mean, more than two months in our church, right? So, so I know that uh, you all remember all those points. Okay, so now we will come to that point. You know, in, in verse 21, read verse 21, chapter 9, verse 21. While I was speaking in prayer, the, name, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at, at the first, came to me in swift flight, at the time of the evening sacrifice. Okay, so in verse 21, while Daniel was praying, we understand that we read there that as, as a reply, as an answer for the prayer of Daniel, God sent Gabriel, the angel, and informed him about what would be the future of Israel. Okay, so he already knew, Daniel already knew that, already Jeremiah, the prophet, mentioned in his book that, okay, oh, 70 years of the destruction of the people of Israel is going to happen. The captivity is going to happen. At the same time, he started to pray. He start, Daniel started to pray and Daniel started to fast. Then the angel of God, the Gabriel, came and informed something to Daniel and about that was about the future of Israel. What is going to happen for the people of Israel in future? Maybe after many years. Okay. And God said, Israel, Israel will, will have to go, go through the cleansing process. Okay, The Israel will have to go through the cleansing process for how many years? 490 years. 
490 years. So when I'm speaking about the, the tribulation and the 70 weeks and all those things, you know, it is very, very, uh, very, very difficult to understand the meaning, the calculation and everything, but we will try to understand as much as possible. Okay, listen. So Daniel received that message from God that this is going to happen. These people, the people of Israel will have to go through the cleansing process cleansing process because they rejected Jesus because they are away from the presence of God. So again, they will have a time of 490 years in future for the cleansing process. That means they were in captivity for how many years? 70 years, right? They were in captivity for 70 years, but their cleansing process is going to be seven times increased. I think, I believe that you, you got it, got that point. Okay, so their captivity was for 70 years in Babylon, but their cleansing process is going to be seven times increased. That means 490 years will be the process, will be the cleansing process. That means there will be a time of 70 sevens, 70 sevens. Okay, it is not 77, but it is 77. That means 70 into 7. Yes. Okay. So that means the, uh, that particular time is given for the people of Israel, for the Jewish people, for the complete restoration of the Jewish people. Okay. So we, we already studied uh, uh, in, our, in our Sunday service that, I mean, they, they, most of them, they came back to Jerusalem. They came back to Jerusalem and they rebuilt the temple, they rebuilt the, uh, the, the, the wall and they rebuilt uh, the altar and they started their worship and everything. Okay, at the same time, so the, it, the, the, the complete restoration is not that happened. So they are waiting for that complete restoration to, to let that every, 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 every Jew should come back to Jerusalem. They are waiting for that. They are waiting for that. Okay, so God has appointed a particular time for those people. Okay, and God will send those people through the cleansing, uh, cleansing process, and they all will know about Jesus more and more. So this is the background of Daniel chapter nine, verses twenty-four to twenty-seven. Now we are we are getting into that portion. Okay, let us come back to that portion. You know, now let let us read the same passage one more time. What is that? Yeah, uh, I mean, chapter nine, verses twenty-four through twenty-seven. Everyone, open your Bible and look into that verse. Particularly, I mean, listen what you understand from that portion. Uh, Daniel chapter nine, verses twenty-four to twenty-seven. Elsa, you read that portion. Uh, uh, every, every everyone can just look into that portion and try to understand what is the meaning of that. Yeah. 70 weeks are decreed about your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, to put an end to sin and to atone your iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to steal, to seal both vision and profit and to anoint a most holy place. Know therefore and understand that from the going out of the word to restore and build Jerusalem to the coming of an anointed one, a prince, there shall be seven weeks. Then for 62 weeks, it shall be built again with squares and moat, but in troubled time. And after 62 weeks, an anointed one shall be cut off and shall have nothing. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and sanctuary. It is its end shall come with the flood and to end there shall be a war. Desolations are decreed and he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week. And for half of the week, he shall put an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abominations shall come one who makes desolate until the decreed end is poured out on the desolator. Okay, what is that? So this passage speaks about the 70 weeks, right? 70 weeks, okay? That means that have been declared against your people, right? Okay, 70 weeks that have been declared against your people. It is particularly written there, okay? 70 weeks have been decreed for your people and your holy city to finish the transgression. So listen, you know, um, Daniel's people are the Jewish people, okay? So this, this word is given for Daniel and he is writing there 
uh, God is giving me this vision and speaking to me through uh, through Gabriel, the angel, and God is declaring that your people, okay, I mean the decree is for is for your people. That means Daniel's people are the Jewish people. That means the nation of Israel, the nation of Israel, okay. And in 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 the same verse, verse 20, 24, he speaks of the period of time that God has given to do especially six things on people of Israel to bring them back to God. Here is the point. You know, God is doing everything with a purpose. God is doing everything with a purpose. Without a purpose, there is nothing. Okay, so from this particular verse, we have to understand one thing. Even if it, 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 it is for the people of Israel, even it is, it is for you and me, God has a particular purpose about everything in our life. Hallelujah. So in Daniel chapter 9, verse 24, it, it says about a period of time that God has given, uh, especially six things is going to happen for the people of Israel to bring them back to God to bring them back to God because they are away from the presence of God. Okay, Most of them are not obeying the word of God. They rejected Messiah. They rejected Jesus. So this is the reason that God has appointed a particular time for these people to come back. Okay, So these are the following six things that are supposed to, take, to be taken place regarding the Jewish people. And let us see which are those six things. Okay, so you, I think you are getting the screen now that the first thing is to finish the transgression. I know that this is this is not that much digestible for all of you to understand all these things, but we will try to, to get into these points. Okay, it is very, very easy. Easily we can understand because it is written in the Bible. So six things are going to happen during the time of the tribulation period six things are going and these are the purpose of God about the people of Israel during the time of the tribulation period of seven years. Okay, the first one is to finish the transgression. To finish the transgression means to stop the transgressions of Israel. To stop the transgressions of the Israel. And there will be a great revival among the people of Israel. There will be a great revival among the people of Israel. Okay, so God will stop the transgressions of Israel. That means they will not sin again. They will, they will just I mean, stop the transgression and there will be a, a revival among the people of Israel. That means when the Antichrist comes and the Antichrist will try to rule over the people and uh, uh, Antichrist will break the covenant with the, the peaceful covenant with the, the people of Israel and he will rule over the world according to his own purpose and according to his own will, then the people of Israel will understand that that Jesus was the Messiah and there will be a revival and there will be a repentance and they will confess about their sins and they will come back to God. I mean, so this is the meaning of the first point to finish the transgression. And the second thing which is going to happen there and the second purpose of God is to put an end to sin. To put an end to sin. That means they did many sins against God. They did many sins against God. But God will seal their sins and put an end to their sin. Okay. If God is making a ceiling on their sin, there is no other sins. Okay, So God will put an end to their sin. That is the meaning of that. And the third one, the third purpose of these things are to atone for wickedness. To atone for wickedness means to make a reconciliation for their iniquity. To make a reconciliation for their iniquity. That means the inquity mentioned here indicates their, their rejection of Jesus Christ. That means they rejected Jesus Christ, right? Jesus Christ um, came to this earth as a, as, a, as a man, as a man, as a human being. But those people, the people of Israel, Jewish people, they were expecting a political king or political leader, okay? But Jesus came into this world as a, as a man. So they could not accept Jesus 
okay, as their king or as their political leader. Okay, so that's the reason that they rejected Jesus Christ. And they said, no, no, this is not our Messiah. We are waiting for our Messiah and our Messiah will be a <clears throat> political leader or a political king. So that is the reason that they, they rejected uh, Messiah and Jesus Christ. Okay, then the iniquity mentioned in this particular uh, uh, particular verse is the rejection, the rejection of Jesus. That means they rejected Jesus Christ. But in Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, can you read that verse? In Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, we read what will happen for the people of Israel during the time of the tribulation. Yeah, Zechariah 12, 10. And I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and pleas for mercy, so that when they look on me, on him whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for, for him as one mourns for an only child and weep bitterly over him as one weeps over a firstborn. Okay, what is that? The people of Israel will look on to Jesus, look on to Messiah whom they pierced, and they will mourn for him. Okay, that means then they will realize that Jesus was the Messiah whom they were expecting. Okay, on those, those days, they didn't know that. But now, uh, during the time of the tribulation, these people will know that, oh, that was the Messiah. That was the Jesus that we were expecting. And they will regret about their iniquity of saying, crucify him, crucify me. Yeah, right? You know, those people, the people of Israel, they were, the Jewish people were saying, Crucify Jesus, crucify Jesus. Okay, with a loud voice, they were just, I mean, making sound and they were just crying that crucify Jesus, crucify Jesus. Then in this point, they will understand, oh, that was the mistake that we did. That was the sin that we did. So God will say, okay, I'm going to stop that sin now. And they will regret about their iniquity of saying and rejecting Jesus Christ. And the fourth one, the fourth purpose is uh, to bring in everlasting righteousness. To bring in everlasting righteousness. I mean, that means uh, to, to, to show that God is righteous forever. Okay? Why it is written to bring in everlasting righteousness? Because that is to show that God is righteous forever. Okay? That means... When God is putting these people of Israel through the, through the process of cleansing, that shows that God is righteous. God is righteous. And even if there, is, there are some people, those who are not believe in Jesus Christ, okay, those people will be punished. That is the righteousness of God. So who is our God? A God is righteous forever and ever. Amen. And the fifth one is to seal up the vision and prophecy, to seal up the vision and prophecy. That means to fulfill the Old Testament prophecies about Israel. To fulfill the Old Testament prophecies about Israel. You know, there are many, many, many prophecies concerning the future of the Israel in the Old Testament. Okay, that means what is going to happen for the people of Israel and uh, uh, what will be the eternity for the people of Israel and what will be the judgment and what will be the method of the judgment for the people of Israel. And all these things are written in, in the Old Testament itself. Okay, at the same time, they were not understanding, they were not realizing what is going to happen in the future very clearly. But in the, in, the, in, the, in the New Testament, it is written very clearly about many things that this is going to happen for the people of Israel after the second coming of Jesus Christ. There will be a, pro a process of cleansing for the people of Israel and they will look back to Jesus and they will accept Jesus in that day. Okay, and the sixth one, sixth one is uh, to anoint the most holy. To anoint the most holy, which means... That speaks about the anointing of the most holy Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the holy, most, uh, I mean, holy Jesus Christ. And, and that will happen. The anointing of the most holy Jesus Christ will happen in those days. So these are the six points that we are getting from that particular verse. The reason that I was reading those portions is to understand there is a God's purpose about these people 
during the time of the tribulation, during the time of the tribulation, that we should know that. We should know that. That's all. Okay. Now, let us come back to, to our topic. Okay. Our topic. You know, here in, in, this, in this chapter itself, we read that God declared here in this passage through Daniel that within the time of the 77s, 77s, okay, within the time of the 77s or 70 into 7 period, the above mentioned things are to be fulfilled. Okay, there are many things, so these this six, uh, six things should be fulfilled, okay, before the time. That means before the before the 77 times, you know, this should fulfill. So this is seven, 77 of years in equal to 490 years. Okay, so we read about the 490 years uh, uh, one calculation. So this is the same thing that 77 of uh, uh, the, that is the equal for the, I mean, 490 years. Okay, again, in verses 25 and 26, Okay, in chapter 9, verses 25 and 26, Daniel is told that the Messiah will be cut off after, okay, Messiah will be cut off after the seven sevens and 62 sevens. It is very clearly written there. There it is written in, 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 in verse 25. So you are to know and discern that from the issuing of a decree to restore the re and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah, the prince, there will be seven weeks. There will be seven weeks and 62 weeks. 62 weeks. It will be built again. Listen, we are going to listen to into that particular verse, verse 25. What is that? Okay. You know, uh, it says that Messiah will be cut off after, okay, and 26th also. Yeah, Messiah will be cut off after. That means seven sevens and 62 sevens. Total, total 69. Okay, so 69. To, to, to begin with a decree to rebuild the Jerusalem. Okay, so the rebuilding of the, the complete rebuilding of Jerusalem is there. And also, we have to think about the the, the, the Messiah will be cut off. Okay, the Messiah will be cut off means what? The crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Okay, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ should be there. And also, there should be a complete rebuilding of Jerusalem. In other words, you can say 69 sevenths of years. That means 483 years. 483 years. That means after the decree of rebuilding Jerusalem, the Messiah will be cut off. The Messiah will be cut off. Okay, so um, uh, the people of Israel, they were, in, they were in Babylon for 70 years. They came back, they returned back to Jerusalem and they rebuilt the Jerusalem. They, they rebuilt the Jerusalem. So that already happened. Then after that, there will be 483 years, the Messiah will be cut off. Okay, so according to the Bible history, the biblical historians, biblical historians, they confirm that 483 years passed from the time of the decree to rebuild Jerusalem to the time when Jesus was crucified. This is a historical record. Did you know? There is a, there is a, uh, the people, they were restored back to Jerusalem once after the 70 years of uh, uh, destruction, they came back to Jerusalem, okay? And from that time, Till the, Jesus, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, it was 483 years. 483 years. So, with that 483 years having passed from, from the decree to rebuild Jerusalem to the cutting of the, of the Messiah, this leaves one seven year period to be fulfilled in terms of Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. Okay, in Daniel chapter 2, 9, verse 24, there is, there is a gap. That means, you know, the seven-year period. There is a seven-year period to be fulfilled, to be fulfilled. That means uh, in order to happen, to finish the transgression, to, to put an end to the sin, um, uh, to atone for wickedness, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, <coughs> and to anoint the most holy, <coughs> holy one. Okay, so there is a particular time given 
for the people of Israel to, to happen all these things. Okay, and once again, you just read Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, once again. <coughs> and he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week, and for half of the week he shall put <coughs> and to sacrifice an offering. And on the wing of abominations shall come one who makes desolate until the decreed end is poured out on the desolator. Okay, so what about the final seven year? <clears throat> the final seven year period is known as the tribulation period. The final seven year period is known as the tribulation period. And it is the time when God finishes judging Israel for its sin. God will finish judging uh, the people of Israel for their sins. Okay, uh, that's what in, in chapter 9 verse 27, you know, that chapter 9 verse 27 gives some information about the, the, the seven year tribulation period. You know, you, you, when, you, when you look into that, it says that, and he will make a firm covenant with the many for one week. Okay, but in the middle of the week, he will put a stop to sacrifice and grain offering, and on the wing of abominations will come one who makes desolate, even until a complete destruction, one that is decreed, is poured out on the one who makes desolate. Okay. I don't know how many of you are getting into that portion because you know he's he's mentioned about a particular person in this verse. <coughs> he's mentioned about a, uh, a particular person in this verse. That 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 person will come. The person will come on the wing of abomination to make desolation, to make desolation. What is that in 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 Malayalam? It is written. Uh, the abomination that causes the desolation. Okay, so in, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 15, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 15, Jesus Christ also is mentioning about the same person. The same person okay and jesus says that abomination that causes desolation okay at the same time in revelation chapter 13 uh revelation chapter 13 verse 1 read that verse 13 1 and i saw a beast rising out of the sea with 10 horns and seven heads with 10 diadems on its horns and blasphemous names on its head yeah and that that that, that person uh, the same person is known as the beast in Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. Okay, and again, in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, it says that the beast will make a peaceful covenant for seven years. Okay, the, the beast will make a peaceful covenant. That means the Antichrist will come and the the and and he will he will make a covenant with the uh, with the people then the for the seven years. And the half, the middle of the middle of the week or middle of the seven years, that means three and a half years, okay, into the tribulation, he will break the covenant. He will break the covenant. That is what we read in uh, chapter 9, verse 27, right? He will break the covenant because it was a peaceful covenant in the beginning. But in the middle, that means after the three and a half years, <clears throat> he will break the covenant, okay? And he will try to... Uh, persecute the people in 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 every ways. Okay, so Revelation chapter thirteen explained. Uh, we will study about those things uh, in the in the upcoming classes because now we are in Revelation chapter six. We will be studying about chapter thirteen also later. Okay, so let me let me conclude uh, these points here today. Uh, you know, in in Revelation chapter thirteen, uh, we explained that uh, the beast will place an image of himself the beast will place an image of himself in the temple and require a world to worship him. That means the world world worship will start. Okay. And the beast will say, the Antichrist will say, okay, all over the world, all the people should worship my image because my image is in the temple and you all should worship me. Okay. The one world, the one world will come. So that is going to happen. Okay. So that will happen. I mean, we believe that 
after the second coming of Jesus Christ, after the rapture of the church. According to many of the references, we understand that way. Okay, so the temple, and, and, and that is what, and in, in chapter 13, verse 5, okay, says that this will go on for 42 months. 42 months means three and a half years, right? 42 months means three and a half years, okay? So that will happen. The, the later, the, the second half of the seven year of tribulation, this is going to happen. The, the severe persecution, the severe, the horrible persecution will happen. So since Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 says that this will happen in the middle of the week and Revelation chapter 13 verse 5 says that the beast will do this for a period of 42 months. Okay, I think it's very clear. It is easy to understand that the total length of this tribulation will be 84 months or the seven years. Amen. Also, chapter seven, Daniel chapter 7 verse 25. Read that verse also and we will stop. Daniel chapter 7 verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going out of the word to restore and build Jerusalem to the coming of an anointed one, a prince, there shall be seven weeks, then for 62 weeks it shall be built again with, with squares and, and moat, but in troubled time. Okay. There's a particular calculation in Daniel chapter 7 verse 25. It is not 9.25, it is 7.25. Okay, there's a particular calculation that it is written the time, then times and half a time. Listen very carefully. The time, times and half a time. That means time means one year, times means two years, half a time means half a year. Total three and a half years, three and a half years. Also refers to the great tribulation. Okay, that is the great tribulation. That means that the, the second half period that means three and a half period of that seven years. Okay, that is going to be the great tribulation for the people. So the last half of the seven year tribulation period when the beast or the antichrist will be in power, that is going to be really the, the horrible time. Okay, so our, I mean, our responsibility this evening is to surrender our life in the presence of God and let us come back to that, I mean, portion that God is in control now and we have a grace of God and we, we are able to be saved today and we can call upon the Lord and let us get the blessings from the Lord. Amen. So let us all come back to that portion and let us surrender our life in the presence of God and let us pray together. Oh God, even the great tribulation is going to happen after the rapture. Lord, we need to be taken up into heaven with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let us prepare ourselves in the presence of God. Let us pray together. I mean, for the blessing that God is giving us. Hallelujah. I mean, we have to think about what is our situation? What is my spiritual situation? Hallelujah. Am I, am I ready to, I mean, uh, to, to be raptured with Jesus Christ in heaven? Hallelujah. Let us surrender life in the presence of God. Hallelujah. There is a happy news that, I mean, if you are a saved person, if you are a real Christian, I mean, God will take you. I mean, Jesus will take you and you will be raptured from this earth to heaven. Hallelujah. When Jesus Christ is coming. Hallelujah. So let us all surrender our life in the presence of God this evening. Hallelujah. Let's pray together. Hallelujah. Let's pray together. Hallelujah. And uh, I mean, let's get ready for the coming of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.